everyone! Welcome to the Crafty Pixie channel where we do sewing projects and subscription boxes. I am B. Whether you are new or old to this channel, thank you so much for stopping by. It is wonderful to have you. I'm back! How's everybody doing? Is everybody okay? Did we have a good, good time? Okay. Um, we've moved. <laughs> I'm in my, my studio. Now, um, stay tuned for next week's video. I'm gonna be doing like a, a walkthrough of what I've done so far and kind of a, just a sit and talk um, cause things still aren't fully up and running. So it's gonna be um, challenging to be <laughs> able to sew. But for today's video, we've got the Sewers Club box for August. Yay. I was actually kind of worried that I wasn't going to get this uh, because we had changed the address and everything like that and you know how that goes, but we have it. So without any further ado, I'm going to get into this box and see what's inside. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a video every week. I try to do it every Wednesday, but we're still trying to settle in, so it might be, it'll be every week. <laughs> it's just I don't know exactly what day. So it's a good idea to hit that notification bell so that you are notified when the video goes live. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below, especially if you are a new subscriber. I would love to hear from you. And give the video a thumbs up. Okay. Um, my allergies are really bothering me today, so I'm probably going to take quite a few sips. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, let's hop in. All right. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Here is what you see when you open the box. And this week's project is going to be the mini ruffle makeup bag. Uh, finishes six and a quarter inches by six inches. And apparently this uses one fat quarter. So you literally have, <laughs> you literally have one piece of fabric. Wow, okay. And we're making a ruffle. Ugh, never done one before. Okay. But that's why I love these boxes. Okay. So let's get in here. Okay. Oh, wait, there's two projects in this box. Okay, so you have a mini ruffle um, makeup bag. And then you have a fill and go expandable basket. What? Oh my goodness. Okay. That's really cool. Okay, hold on. Let me... <laughs> we got kind of like a, a two for one this month. That's a first. Okay. So this is, let me see. One, two, three pages of instructions, and it has a little um, pattern piece with it. Okay, so this is what that looks like when you're done. So we're getting those two. Ooh, I'm excited. Let me see. Oh, um, this box retails for, or 
for $31.99 a month. Um, you do have three options. You've got the monthly option, you've got the every three months, or you have the once a year. Um, so let me see. It looks like the add-on notion is the Gypsy Quilter Cool Pins. Oh, that's really cool. These pins um, are heat resistant up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you got the extra add-on to the box, I think it's like $9 extra a month, that's what you got in this month's box. So let's, let's see what we got inside. Okay. Oh, we've got the nice little handmade uh, bag tag like we did in a previous video um, when we did the other makeup bag. Um, so it just says homemade and it's actually homemade. So that's really cool, okay. And then we've got our Guterman thread. And let me see what color it is. Um, this is probably Let's see, there's three different color options for the thread this month. It's random in, in whatever box. So there's dark orange, carrot, and dogwood. So I'm gonna go with that as carrot. Yeah, I'd probably go carrot on that one. Okay. So this is, this looks like our fat quarter for the uh, mini makeup bag. That's very pretty. Very subtle. It's kind of a, a light gray. It's got a, um, I don't know, paisley kind of print to it. So that's really pretty. Very, very pretty. Look, I'm trying to fold it just like it was in the box. I do it every time. Okay. Um, this is not going to be my normal setup. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm gonna have like stuff on the wall and, and stuff all around. This is just um, a temporary thing because I'm still getting everything in order. So this is, this looks like it's for the other project. So you've got this fabric. That's very fall. That's cute. Bunch of flowers. And then they got this. Oh, this is a pretty one. Oh, okay. Hold on. So there's this one. It's kind of like a mauve color and it's got uh, leaves on it. And then this is our third fabric. So there's that. Isn't that cute? Okay. Darker colors. You know I like the darker colors. My favorite time of year is fall. So that's awesome. And then we have our, is it? Yep. We have our fusible fleece. All folded up nice and nice, neat. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, this is really cool for, okay. For $31.90, $32 rounding up a month. This project, this month, we got two projects. Um, the only thing that we don't have in this box is a, um, like we have the fat quarter for this project and the bag tag but we don't have the zipper. Um, so bear that in mind, guys, when you are uh, opening yours, it doesn't come with a zipper, so you may have to go get one. Um, it doesn't even, uh, it doesn't tell you, does it tell you? So a five and three fourths inch zipper. So bear that in mind when you guys are um, 
doing that. And then, but we have all of the stuff needed for this one. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really, really cool that they added an, another little project. Uh, the expandable basket is the main project for this. So I'm probably going to do the walkthrough for that one, like the put together for that one. If you guys want to see me put together the makeup bag, leave a comment in the comment section and I will, um, try to film it for you. It's not going to be next week. Um, it'll probably be the week after if that's something that you guys are interested in me doing the walkthrough for. Uh, please let me know because I don't know if you don't tell me. Um, so that's, that's that. This um, expandable basket is going to finish approximately 5 inches by 13 inches by 6 inches. So that's a, that's a good size bag or basket, not bag, basket. So, okay. So let's, uh, let me put everything together so I don't mix anything up. That's cool that they gave you, I can't get over that. They gave you two projects this month. That's really cool. The only thing that wasn't included in my box was, um, a zipper. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Um, cause it's a bonus project. So that's good. And once again, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I haven't filmed in a little bit and I'm kind of getting back into the groove of, of doing it. Plus I have to maneuver all kinds of stuff and, and make this area really work. So it's a whole lot bigger than what I was working with, which is awesome. So I am, uh, I get stuff cut out and everything, and then we'll do the walkthrough. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, for this project, you're gonna need all of your pattern pieces. You're going to need clips or pins. You're going to need scissors, a marking tool that can erase. Um, you will see it on the outside of the fabric. You're going to need uh, some sort of uh, ruler. Marking tool, um, coordinating thread, sewing machine, and a little bit of time. All right, for the first part of this, we're gonna be working on the ties and the handles. I went ahead and put the other ones together, but I'm gonna show you these. It's really simple. We've done it a million times when we do handles or anything like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one side of your tie and you're going to fold it up a quarter of an inch like so, and then we're going to iron it. You can measure this if you want to. You don't have to. I made it a little too big, hold on. Just a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> And then we're turning it and we're going to fold it so that the two long sides meet. You can finger press this or you can press it with the iron, whichever one you want to do.
<clears throat> and then you're going to open it back up. And you're going to fold the sides in to match the center line that you just made. Fold the other side so it meets in the center. Don't overlap anything. You're going to do this to all four of the ties. This is being stubborn today. And then we're just going to fold it over so that the folded sides meet. You want to keep any raw edges tucked in. to clip it so that everything stays while I'm finishing everything else up. These are more annoying to me because they're smaller. So I find them a little bit more difficult to work with. like that and then you can set that aside and you can take the handle which is bigger so it's going to be easier so we're going to fold it long ends together meeting you can finger press it or you can press it with an iron it to meet the center the other 
other side over to meet the center. Do not overlap because it'll make it kind of bulky. fold it over so that the folded edges are aligned and your raw edges are encased. Just like that. Now I like to pin these as well. Now we're going to take all of these over to the sewing machine and with an eighth of an inch seam allowance you're going to top stitch right along that folded edge where the two are meeting on all of the ties and all both of the handles. Um, eighth of an inch seam allowance, top stitching all along, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. All right, once you have done those stitches and um, ironed them, we're going to take the handles and put them to the side. Now we're going to take our ties that we made and the side that has your folded, where you folded in the quarter of an inch, we're just going to tie a little knot into each one of them. Adds a little bit of decoration there for you. And the, you know, the pattern does say if you want to make a nice creative stitch along the seams when you top stitch you're more than welcome to do that so just take each one of them and make sure you've got the side that's folded in and just finish tying them off Apologize for the camera angles. I'm still working on figuring that out in my new location. Alright, last one. <clears throat> Alright, now you're going to set these aside for just a few minutes. And you're going to grab your two outside or exterior crescents, <laughs> half circles, uh, the ones that are fused with the fusible fleece. And we're going to find the center <clears throat> for each of them. You can mark this with a uh, marking tool or you can just make a very tiny snip. So you've got the little triangle there to go by. Just a tiny one, you don't need a big one. All right, and then you're going to make markings on each side of your long edge and they tell you in the pattern how low that is.
sure you can see your line when you do it. Okay, do it to both. And then from your center mark, you're going to measure down or measure across where it says in the pattern. This is why it's very important that you have, actually, I'm going to get my bigger one. Hold on. Important that you have a marking tool that will be able to line up. sure you're even here. Very important. Okay, you're going to do the same thing on the other one. Hopefully more confidently this time. Next, you're going to take your straps that you just sewed, take it, and with the line that you made on one side, you're going to line it up right with that line, and you're going to either clip or pin into place, and you're going to take another one. Do the same thing to your other line. On the other side, you're going to do this to both pieces. Okay, so you've got your ties looking like that. Do the same thing to this one. Same with this one. <clears throat> and you're doing this so that you've got the raw edges of your ties on the raw side of the outer piece, just like that. So right sides up. Alright, 
now what we're going to do is we're going to align the tie to the center marking that you made. So right where the marking begins and ends is where you're aligning. I'm actually going to put a pin here because my clips don't fit that far. <laughs> Align it up like so. I'm going to pin it into place. Make sure you are aligned. You're going to do this to both of them. And you're going to take this over to the sewing machine and if you want you can sew right along the top stitch that you've already made on your ties but you are only sewing it to the beginning of your line so the center marking line per the measurements in the pattern is where you are starting your stitch you're going to stitch all the way across. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. This is securing the ties. You're going to do the same thing to all of the pieces. Okay, so there's four total. Okay, so I'm going to go do that. If you want, you can base down the um, edges if you want, but you don't have to. So I'm going to go do that real fast and I'll be right back. All right, once those are sewed and pressed, you can put those to the side. Next, we're going to grab our exterior center piece. And we're gonna mark the center, which I've already done. And then per the measurement in the pattern, you're gonna make your um, center line. And you're gonna take your handle and you're going to line it up so the raw edges are with the raw edges and the, the side here is aligned with the outside of the line you just made. And then you're going to clip it. And then we're gonna fold this and do the exact same thing on the other side. So it forms your handle, clip it. Now take this over to the sewing machine and you just wanna baste it down on both sides. Okay, I'm gonna go do that, I'll be right back. With the handles attached, you can now put that to the side going to go ahead and grab your uh, pocket piece <clears throat> and we're going to bring the shorter sides um, so that they are together right sides facing so right sides facing like so And then we're going to pin this just along the raw edges on the shorter side. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and with a quarter of an inch seam allowance we're just going to sew right across to make sure you backstitch at the beginning and at the end when you're done we're going to flip it right side out and give it a good press so let me do that and i'll be right back with your pocket piece 
turned right side out, you're going to go ahead and where your folded edge is, where you folded it in half, you're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance right across the top. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Once that's done, you're going to take your long interior piece. You're going to measure down the appropriate length as what it says in the pattern. Okay, and then you're gonna fold your pocket piece in half like so, and you're going to make a line with a marking tool that will erase, that isn't going to be permanent. Okay, you just want to make sure that's in place for the next step. Then you're going to line it up like so. Okay, and you're going to clip or pin it into place. Once you've done that, you're going to baste down the sides and you're going to normal 2.5 millimeter stitch length across the bottom. Make sure you backstitch really well at the beginning and at the end, okay? When you're done doing that, where your center mark is that you made, you're going to do a normal stitch, 2.5 millimeter stitch length, all the way down that center. Make sure you backstitch really well at the beginning and the end. This is gonna provide two slots in the pocket for you. So I'm going to go do all of that and I will be right back. All right, now that the pocket is done, we're gonna set this aside for right now. And we're going to grab our exterior piece with the handles and our exterior side pieces with the ties. Now, we're going to attach the long edge. Well, no, sorry wrong. We're going to attach the curved edge to the longer edge of your pattern of your exterior piece. So you should already have the center marked. If you do not, go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just going to make a teeny tiny snip. We're going to be doing this to both <clears throat> exterior pieces. This is going to give you the basket shape. So then we're going to find the midpoint. And both sides of the longer piece. This should be a little bit easier to do on the exterior piece than it is on the lining piece uh, because you've got the fusible fleece on the exterior piece um, and it prevents the fabric from stretching. So now we're going to line up the center markings right sides together like so. I'm going to pull it, match up the curved edge here. Line it up as best you can. And line up this side right here. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and start pinning or clipping the rest. You always want to align this. Now, I've said it in numerous videos, there's no such thing as perfect but you want to try to make this as aligned as possible. When you are sewing this, you want to make sure you catch the raw edges of your ties 
but do not catch the knotted ends or your handles when you sew because then you're gonna have to take the whole thing apart and do it all over again and that's just a mess so you're gonna line up the raw edges and keep going <clears throat> shouldn't be too bad. You want to make sure that you're avoiding as much puckering as possible. Now when you get to the lining part, you don't have to worry about being as perfect because it's a lining. No one's going to pay that close of attention to it. But for your exterior, you want to try to not have any puckering. Just like that so it's already starting to take its rounded shape and then you're just gonna do it to the other side I like to kind of do one at the center one at the corner and then keep alternating I find that it doesn't pucker as bad when I do that you're kind of nesting the two pieces together so that helps there too okay I know it's a curved edge I don't like curved edges either but it's not a whole lot of it so I think we'll be okay So you can either do pin or clip both sides and then take it over to the sewing machine or you can do one side at a time so you don't get the ties or handles caught in there. But we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and with a quarter inch seam allowance you're going to backstitch really well at the beginning and at the end and then you're just going to sew all the way around both sides. And then for your lining piece you're going to do the exact same thing okay so I'm going to go do all of that and then I will be right back once that is done you can take your exterior and turn it right side out now you're going to fold the seam in either direction and you're going to come through and you're going to top stitch over that so you hold the seam in its place <clears throat> so that the bag holds its shape a lot better okay so um, just a normal top stitch eighth of an inch seam allowance um, three millimeter stitch length um, make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end and you're only doing the two curved sides okay I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Now that that is done, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the exterior so that the fashion side or the correct side is inside and you're going to take your interior, place it right sides together. When you do this, make sure your handles and your ties are inside. We don't want them caught. Right, so we're in like so. Oops. Wait, yeah, no, I'm right. And we're going to line up each of the seams. Always do, I like to do that first for everything. <clears throat> Make sure everything is nice and tucked in. You want to line up the raw edges. Clip into place like so. The next one.
We're going to do this around the entire exterior. Now you're going to leave a three inch opening in one of the sides so that we're able to turn everything right side out. Then you're going to take, after you've pinned everything in place, you're going to take this over to the sewing machine and with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, we are going to sew all along the raw edge at the top where we just pinned. Make sure you backstitch really, really well at the beginning and end of your opening. You don't want it ripping when you turn everything right side out. So I'm going to finish this up, take this over to the sewing machine, do that, and I will be right back. I uh, finished sewing and went ahead and turned everything right side out. So this is what you're looking at when you're done. Be very careful when you turn it right side out. Um, I don't think three inches is enough space to, to do it, so just be careful with that. Um, but then I went ahead, rolled all the seams, closed off my opening. So the final step is to come along and with a top stitch, eighth of an inch seam allowance, go ahead and just top stitch all the way around. Make sure you seal your opening here and then give it a final press and you are done. All right, so until next time, keep sewing, keep trying. It's not, uh, you never get better if you don't continue to try. And uh, if you would like to see the other project that is in this month's bag, please let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, see ya.